Tonight at 6, one person taken to the hospital after a house caught fire in Burton. The latest on the investigation there. Plus the shocking details behind a house of horrors in Saginaw. How victims were able to escape a hostage situation that included torture. And JR turns his eyes toward the end of the week and the chance for a winter storm. ABC 12 News at 6 starts now. Covering Flint, Saginaw, Bay City, and Midland, this is ABC 12 News at 6. The brutality, the look, the intimidation, I've seen nothing like it. A serial monster. That's how Genesee County Sheriff Chris Swanson describes 36-year-old Michael Barajas, the Flint man accused of trafficking a woman for sex. Barajas facing 20 more felony charges, including 10 CSC charges, after another victim who first met Barajas decades ago has come forward accusing him of similar acts. Our Don Jones is here now with the latest developments on a story that we have been following since it first unfolded. Don? Angie, Michael Barajas and his sex trafficking ring came to light last November. That's when Ghost rescued his 20-year-old victim. There is a, a group of individuals that they see, they see male and female victims, young and old, as property, as assets. It is the sex slavery industry. Genesee County Sheriff Chris Swanson says a 20-year-old woman became a victim of the industry when she was taken to this house by Michael Barajas last November. Every day she would have these individuals come over and they would, they would rape her as Barajas and his other generals would hold her down using things just like this, which is the actual rope from the scene that was used to tie down and to restrain the victim as they sexually assaulted her. Barajas also filed his teeth and used them as a weapon to intimidate his victim. The sheriff says the woman tried to escape the house of terror. The third time was a success. She had a medical emergency that a 911 call was made. She was brought to the hospital, and that's where she was rescued by ghost. Barajas was arrested. I knew this serial monster was bad, but I did not realize he's as bad is what I'm going to tell you today. It wasn't Barajas' first time. Another victim came forward this year giving a chilling account. And it's recorded and, it, and it's stunning that this victim statement says that, that this happened a hundred or more times. And it began when she was just four years old for several years. He was 17, 18, 19 back then and she was four and every week, sometimes four to five times a week, he would hold this little girl and he would do the same thing to her, almost the same type of threats, the same type of intimidation, and the same type of sexual assault. The sheriff says Barajas was also grooming a gang of sex traffickers. Two other people have been arrested in connection with this case. The sheriff is looking for one more. He also believes that there are more victims. Anyone with information should call 911. Angie? John, thank you. If you are a victim of sexual assault in Genesee County or anywhere, Michigan has a hotline that you can call. It's right there at the top of your screen. They will provide information and resources 24-7. The conversation will remain confidential and anonymous. Anyone with information about Michael Barajas or any of the other people involved with the allegations Don just laid out can call the Genesee County Sheriff's Office at the number you see right now on your screen. You can also see the national hotline there as well. Developing now in Burton, several fire departments responded to a house fire this afternoon. You're looking live at the home on Byers Street now that's off of Center Road, just north of Atherton. Crews are starting to leave the area now. The home siding heavily damaged by the flames and smoke. And here's what the scene looked like just about two hours ago when our crew got to the scene. The call came in just after four and the flames started in the first floor kitchen and quickly spread upstairs. The fire chief tells ABC 12 one person was taken to the hospital. It's not clear how they are doing at this hour. Stay with us throughout the night for updates. Today in Bay City, a mix of sun and clouds, even a flurry or two. But we are keeping alert for a storm system headed our way in the back half of the week. Chief Meteorologist J.R. Kurtzak tracking it now. J.R., are we talking about some significant snow? No, uh, not. It's not going to be the biggest snowmaker by any stretch of the imagination. But when we factor in the potential for some light accumulations with falling temperatures and strong winds on Friday, 
adding all that up, we could have some slippery roads, no doubt. So forth. late Thursday and Friday, we still have the alert days designated, and we'll continue to track the storm as it's well, still developing way down in Kansas. Outside right now, mostly cloudy skies. Some of us did manage to see a little bit of sunshine today. Uh, but just the uh, fortunate few, let's say. Bay City right now, visibility is just fine. And Storm Tracker 12 Doppler radar not showing anything out there. We did have some snow showers and flurries earlier this afternoon. Those have already faded away. So no problems for travelers for the night or for our Wednesday. Right now in Flint, the temperature 38 degrees, easterly wind at 7, in Saginaw it's 34, northeasterly wind at 12. How much snow? Well, let's take a look at it. With the north northeasterly wind on the backside of the system on Friday, there will be some enhancement of accumulation out there toward Lake Huron. Otherwise, again, some slippery roads not out of the question. We'll have your full forecast just ahead. Thank you, JR. Now to developing news in Flint's water emergency. About 43,000 Flint residents are waiting for payments after that historic $626 million settlement with our state. Many have gotten letters in the last two weeks spelling out the delay since June 2022's deadline. It pointed to the long process to review nearly 3 million documents tied to the claims. Attorney Trishel Young tells ABC 12 News the special master is preparing a report for the court on the status of the claims process. The report will be released to the public soon, and we will continue to track the status of these payments going forward. This close. I mean, 25 yards from my front door, you've got uh, like the worst possible crimes that you could be having. For hearing reactions tonight on a case out of Saginaw, two men are accused of robbing two others, holding them captive, and torturing them. Two adults have been arrested. Two teenagers are expected to be charged as adults for their roles in the alleged crimes. We've learned the two victims were able to escape this house of horrors when they noticed a police officer in the area. So, Terry, how were they able to get that officer's attention? Uh, Angie, one of them jumped out of a window and ran over to the Saginaw police officer who was in the area on an unrelated traffic stop. A neighbor tells us there had been problems at this particular house, but nothing like this. To know that this was happening in my backyard is the most heinous act I can imagine. Casey Denno lives across the street from this home at the corner of Granger and Jackson on Saginaw's west side. Police say it was on Thursday when a 17-year-old male visited the home to hang out with John Tory and Reed and Mitchell Ballard. They're all friends. But police say the two men in their early 20s pulled a gun on the teen, stole the teen's phone and clothes, held him captive, and tortured him. Shaved one of the victim's head. Um, they, they were whipping him with cords. They also burned the teen. Another man arrived at the home to hang out on Friday, and Detective Sergeant Matt Duro says he too was victimized. Devised a plan because they were scared that, you know, one of them was going to jump out of the window and uh, go get help. One of the victims jumped from a window after seeing the flashing lights of a police car around 7 Friday night. He told the officer what had happened, and Reed and Ballard were arrested, along with two 17-year-old females from Saginaw, who police believe also participated in the crimes. Denno says Reed and Ballard have been causing trouble for the neighborhood lately. They've been throwing flaming trash out in the yard, anything that could be a danger. But he's surprised at what police are saying happened inside that home. It terrifies me. It's the, I think that's the worst thing somebody could do. It's worse than killing somebody to actually torture. Now, the two victims are now doing okay. Reed and Ballard both face armed robbery and assault with intent to do great bodily harm, less than murder charges. Angie? Wow, thank you, Terry. The 17-year-olds have been charged in juvenile court. They are expected to face adult charges soon. Back in October 2019, Governor Gretchen Whitmer signed a bill into law changing the maximum age of juvenile criminal jurisdiction from 16 to 17 years of age. At that time, Michigan was one of just four states where 17-year-olds were considered adults during criminal trials. That is no longer the case as of October 2021. New at 6, attorneys are asking a West Michigan judge to drop the second-degree murder charge against a former Grand Rapids police officer charged in the death of a black man last year. You'll remember Christopher Schur was seen on camera shooting Patrick Leoya in the back of the head after a traffic stop in April 2022. Schur's attorneys asking a district court judge to dismiss the charge, even though the judge already bound the case over to trial. They argue state law allowed Schur to use deadly force in the case. Schur's trial is set to start in March. Still ahead on ABC 12 News at 6, a new sub-variant of COVID-19 could be the most transmissible yet. How the vaccines approved for Americans stack up against the strain.
Plus, meet the woman opening Mid Michigan's first bartending school right in downtown Flint. Covering Flint, Saginaw, Bay City, and Midland, you're watching ABC 12 News at 6 with Angie Hendershot, Matt Franklin, Chief Meteorologist J.R. Kurta, and Sports Director Brandon Green. ABC 12 News, first, in-depth, everywhere.